go to our final speaker against the motion, identity politics is tearing society apart, David Lammy, Labour MP for Tottenham, one of Parliament's most prominent campaigners for social justice, famously led the recent campaign for the Windrush generation to be granted British citizenship. He's fought for justice for the Grenfell Tower families and, of course, has run the high-profile campaign calling on Oxbridge to improve access for students from underrepresented and disadvantaged backgrounds. David, the floor is yours. Great. Great. So I'm listening to the speakers, and I'm thinking about a young David Lammy growing up in Tottenham in the 1970s. It's the young David Lammy that looks like Michael Jackson and wants to be Michael Jackson. And that young David Lammy would never have believed that the tide of human progress would bring me here in front of you, able to articulate, to speak, to have the confidence to do that. I was also thinking of another young but a bit older David Lammy who walked into the House of Commons at the beginning of that Tony Blair government. By that point, I looked more like Denzel Washington. <laughs> this was a period of consensus politics. Clinton, Blair, um, New Labour, things were coming together. We had 10 consecutive quarters of growth and a kind of cool Britannia emerged where, uh, you know, there were a lot of drugs as well and things, but, you know, dance music. But people loved one another. Here I am, 2019. I now look like Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> Tomorrow, people will be voting in the European elections and many will vote for what I see as hard right parties and positions. This is an age of Trump, of Farage, of Jacob Rees-Mogg, of Boris Johnson. And we are accusing identity politics of tearing society apart. The great story of the 20th century was probably democracy. But if there is a second story, theme, that arcs that century, surely it is rights. And that by the end of that century, so many human beings who started off at the beginning of the 20th century, subjugated, oppressed, could actually begin to self-actualize in their own lifetimes. Women got the vote, and with the invention of the pill, control over their own bodies. Ethnic minorities, Colonized. Remember those pink bits of the atlas over so much of the world? Broke off because of the powerful words and behavior of people like Gandhi from that colonization. Workers came from being exploited, birthed movements like the Labour Party. And I still believe, at its best, the best progressive cause in our country. And now, same-sex marriage, and those who are LGBT taking their place, when it's only in 1967 that you could be imprisoned because of the person that you love. That is a remarkable story, the story that is the story of the 20th century. And of course that is a story about identity. Because when Martin Luther King spoke, and he talked about judging somebody by the character of their soul, not by the color of their skin. 
Have we arrived at that? And, and even though that was a goal, even though that was a goal, he didn't park his identity at the door to get that goal. And neither did Harvey Milk fighting for gay rights in San Francisco and beyond. And all those fighting for disability rights. So for me, identity politics is about empathy. It is about dignity. And my God, I look Nigel Farage in the face and I say it's about compassion. Compassion for your fellow human being. So we stand by that progress despite all that we have to do. We're now in a period where those on the right dismiss it. When I raise concerns about who should lead the inquiry into those poor people that died desperately, included a friend of mine on the 20th floor of Grenfell Tower, burned to death a young woman called Khadija Say. And I raised questions about who should lead that inquiry. Because actually, in the role that I play in public life, someone should say, does it have to be another white, male, privileged, upper-class judge? Not because he can't do a good job. George Scarman did a good job when he led the riots into the Brixton riots. But is there not, in Britain in 2019, an ethnic minority lawyer or even a woman that could take that role. And I say that at a point in our country where only 7% of the judges are from an ethnic minority background, and we have one, one woman on our Supreme Court. Progress, so much more, so much more to do. And those on the left, of course, class, and economic inequality have to be challenged. That's the basis of my politics. But those who fight for rights today do not stand opposed to issues of um, inequality that exist in our society. Just as there were LGBT people who set up solidarity funds to fight for the minors, you can be alongside those in that battle for, um, against inequality in our society. And yes, there are moments when it goes too far. If you're tweeting or writing, white people are trash, kill all men, that is identity politics that I would not want to associate myself with. But let us be clear on the proposition. Let us really single in on what may be tearing our society apart. Populism might well be tearing our society apart. Populism on the hard right and populism on the hard left. Austerity, cuts, brutal cuts to local authorities right up and down the country. The biggest north-south divide since 1911. That may be tearing our society apart. Grim poverty, chronic housing conditions right across this city that means so many people who could be in this audience aren't in this audience. That could be tearing our society apart. Gross inequality with 44% of the UK's wealth owned by just 10% of our population. 50% of the land in the UK owned by 1% of the population. That could be the proposition. That could be tearing our society apart. But instead, this proposition asks you, blame the Bangladeshi woman. Blame the trans man. Blame the individual with disability. And then they say they're victims. And we heard that language from Lionel. Victimhood? The victimhood that is being manipulated in our country is a victimhood that's being peddled today by Nigel Farage. It is not the victimhood of the people I just described. 
So reject this proposition. It is not tearing our society apart. It's an arc that begins with people like Mandela, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Emily Pankhurst. Stand alongside it. Because in the age that we are in, there is a big difference between dignity, compassion, and human rights, and the populism that would rip our country asunder. Thank you very much, David.